Hello and welcome everybody to the Raw News! The running world's most engaging, entertaining, and informative news segment. Ah! This will encompass three main parts. The first will be just kind of a general update in the world of running. The second will be a athlete focus where we'll talk about any track and field or long distance running athlete, their training, kind of what they like, what they don't like. And I'll try to kind of pull and suss out from that maybe a little training tip that will lead us into the third bit, which would be something more applicable to you. So we'll have like a, a walk away training tip and we'll talk about the science behind it, but also kind of the, the merits of whatever it might be. So info, athlete focus, and a little bit of a training talk. First up in this week's Renews, there is a gigantic heat wave across not Northern Europe, but Paris, the city I live in, which is fantastic. So it's currently 39 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit in my apartment. There is no air conditioner here. And I'm also on the top floor. I have a, I have like a fan, you know, like put like an ice block in front of the fan. It can make you think that it's cooler. Been suffering through this for like three days. It's not fun. Three more days. Second subject in this week's Red News. There will be a marathon in the fall. Oh my gosh. It'll be October 4th, 2020. It will be an elites only London marathon. They're going to set it up in like a contained biosphere. Think like a like a Formula One race. So audience can't like go in there. Fans can't like go in there. But you'll be able to watch it. And what's super cool is we're going to be able to watch <sighs> Kenanisa Bikaili versus Eliud Kipchoge, the world record holder, in the marathon. They're going to have a head to head. It's going to be awesome. And I'm not sure the other elites that are confirmed, but I'm sure it'll be a fantastic race. Oh my God, you guys, I hope we can start to race again soon because I'm going crazy. I don't know about you guys, but I just, I just want to like run with people and just like not feel like I'm going to gonna gonna die afterwards you know what i mean there will also be a virtual race for the london marathon i'll put all this info below these virtual races are, are becoming obviously much more popular because of the current situation i haven't done any um let me know in the comments if they're fun if you guys like them or if they're not really fun second order of renew speaking of uh, kipchoge uh, i found this really funny little um PR campaign stunt he's, he was doing. So here you'll see that he was touring the Maasai Mara Wildlife Reserve to watch a uh, wildebeest migration uh, in Kenya. So looking through, it's essentially like a, a PR campaign uh, to raise awareness, uh, obviously in capital, for the for the reserve. And they're expecting to sign him as the magical Kenya destination ambassador by Kenyan tourism. Nice. All this is lovely and that sounds fantastic and I hope you do raise a lot of uh, awareness and capital for the uh, wildlife reserve. Please stay away from the wildebeest, okay? Just protect yourself. Next piece of renews, uh, there's this new magical fitness band called Whoop, which is not this, this is a Garmin. Found them doing some kind of, uh, some product sponsorship pushes and advertising campaigns on Tin Man Elite, which is a fellow YouTubing YouTube runnery channel. All right, so. One of the things I like to use uh, to show me how well I've recovered is the Whoop app. Go into logging your recovery and seeing what works for you. Then that saves that data, comes up with 82% recovery. If you don't know, a Whoop band is essentially supposed to be a little device you stuck in your arm and it tracks your sleep and your heart rate, your HRV, your heart rate variability, and, and tells you in very simple terms, you are fully recovered from your previous workout and you're now ready to train at your fullest. I actually think I might do a little video on this in the future because a lot of wearables have these um, these little algorithms where they can tell you if you're fully recovered or not. So even on like the super old Garmin, uh, it'll say, great job on whatever workout, you need four days of recovery. Whoop is an interesting one because, well, it's newer, but they also charge like a monthly membership. So you have to like buy it, it's, it's cheap to buy, but then there's like a monthly membership. So I might do a video on that in the future. Just I'll look into like their algorithm and stuff and see if what, the, what the science says about HRV and anyways. Speaking of YouTube, one of my favorite YouTubers who's absolutely fantastic. I'd love to meet you one day. Sage Canada of VO2 Max Productions. Um, he posts videos all the time. I saw one, uh, saw a really nice one though a few days ago where, where he posted on running economy and biomechanics. So he, 
he is a is a as a if you've never seen his channel, I'll put it put a link here and down in the description. So he is a an ultra marathoner and a marathoner, and he went on the track with a friend of his who was a miler, and they did some strides at like a, a quicker pace, like 440 mile. And so he's not used to running at these faster paces. And so he, then he did a little analysis and basically found that he found that he lacked power in his stride, which was causing too fast of a turnover, which I thought was pretty cool because most people, their problem is not as having a slow turnover, not having it fast enough. But he was running more than 180 steps a minute, but the power wasn't there. So he was actually heel striking, running a faster cadence, which I thought was super interesting. Um, and so then he was talking about kind of lack of power from his glutes and his quads and his calves and Achilles and stuff, um, which will kind of lead to that. Because if you're not as powerful in your stride, then of course you're not going to be carried as further each step, right? Um, and I'll link that below. And which, what, the reason I thought it was interesting is because personally I suffered from this a few months ago and I found that, as he alluded to in the end of his video, like a steady diet of uh, super fast hill sprints, uh, you know, once a week going to fairly steep hill all out 10 seconds as hard as you can go with like a three minute recovery, uh, really kind of fixed my form quite a bit. It promoted a really good knee lift, but also, uh, like strengthened up my glutes and kind of my explosiveness and my, my calves and my Achilles. And it really kind of, uh, brought my form out quite a bit and um, I can notice a difference now. And so as a, a, as a favorite runner of mine says, the hills pay the bills. Actually that runner is gonna be this week's athlete focus. We have Ben True. Uh, so he's one of my favorite distance runners. He's a US distance runner. Um, he hasn't made an Olympics yet, but he's absolutely fantastic. The reason I like him so much is because he's, he's also tall. So I'm 6'2", he's also like 6'2". I know that sounds a bit ridiculous, but for you tall guys and gals out there, I think you're aware that for long distance running, it's not necessarily a tall person sport, right? Because tall people tend to be heavier. They also tend to kind of uh, dissipate heat uh, worse than their, their shorter counterparts. And so that's why most of the, the world record marathoners and stuff throw like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, around there. Anyway, so he's super tall. He's also super fast, which is awesome. He's a 5K, 10K runner and his bests are here. So he's absolutely fantastic. I've been kind of following him for years. He has a fantastic stride as well. So these are the kind of things that I've, I've, I've accrued and found like over the months and years and stuff. Um, so he's a pretty high mileage runner. He does like about 100 or so miles a week, 90 to 100, 110 miles a week. For sure he does doubles. So he used to have a Strava account, which was really cool. We could see some really awesome training on there. He He's since taken it down because I just think for privacy so people don't see like all of his secret workouts and stuff. And most of his training paces, if I can remember, his easy pace was around like 6.30 per mile, 6 to 6.30 per mile. Oh God, so fast. This is one of my favorite workout videos. He did, I think five times a mile as his 10K pace, which was four very not slow paces. He's sponsored by Saucony. So in terms of shoes, these are the ones that I found that he typically he runs in. Ben's really cool because uh, he actually has a background in cross country skiing. Fun fact, cross country skiing, that's the one like this where you cross country skiers are the only athletes in the world that have a higher VO2 max than long distance runners. So VO2 max is the amount of oxygen you utilize, milliliters of oxygen you utilize per kilogram of body weight. Uh, per minute, ml per kg per minute. It's essentially how well your body uses the oxygen that it's breathing. Those cross country skiers will have a higher VO2 max typically than long distance runners because they're not just using their legs, they're using their arms. So you've got two extra little appendages that you're using. So that's why they'll have a higher VO2 max. Anyway, so he did that in college and then he became a pro runner, typically trains in the Northern part of the States and Maine, if I'm not mistaken. And he trains solo. So he does not train with a team. He pretty much trains by himself, which I think is pretty cool. Actually, he used to train with a, a Nike group in Oregon, but then it didn't work. And so he kind of has been training by himself, which is awesome. The second reason I love him as a runner so much is because uh, he has one of the, the silky, smoothiest, butteriest running strides ever. It's awesome. It's just like, it's like per it's perfection, right? And that's all the big stuff. So I'll put a little summary here and I'll link all of his social media stuff in, in the, the bits below. He's not really active on social media, unfortunately. So I did have to do a lot of sleuthing and stuff, but he does have a YouTube channel with his wife, who's also a pro runner, and he did start a coffee company. So feel free to check out his, uh, his stuff below. And so lastly, the, the third reason I picked Ben True this week is because um, he and his wife did a YouTube video last week. Running, doing a fart lick. 12 times, two minutes, 
with 90 seconds recovery. So you didn't look at your watch once? No, I have the beepers on. So you just have the beeper set for, and you don't care about pace? No, it's definitely. Which I thought was pretty cool that a person whose career, who, whose livelihood uh, lives and dies depending on the seconds and the distances and how like accountable they are to those two things that will do uh, their train uh, that will do sometimes training runs that are by effort and intensity and time instead of um, specific pace and specific distance. So with that, our little training nugget. So what about training? paces and distances versus effort and time. So first I will speak anecdotally. I actually prefer, I much more prefer, um, running uh, fartlek style workouts where I'll run, let's say, hard for a minute, easy for a minute versus uh, 300 meters on, 400 meters off or something. It's much less mentally stressful and I find myself enjoying the work a, a lot more. But oftentimes I'm getting the same training benefit. And so if you watch any videos about uh, people going to Eaton, Eaton Kenya for, for training and for altitude training, there's the Thursday Far Luck Run. It's this kind of this, this legendary or just well known in the running community weekly run. And it's like 150 runners, um, anyone from like total chumps like me to world record holders and Olympians and all that good stuff. Um, they're all just kind of like, they show up together at 6 a.m. or 6.30 or whatever, and then they, they take off and it's, you know, 20 sets of three minutes hard, two minutes easy or something. And kind of looking through just kind of like the way that they feel about it is that they're, they're trying to just feel the effort of the run and, and get into the groove and get into the rhythm and they're trying to listen to their body, but also listen to, they're kind of like trying to let the run speak to them instead of trying to adhere to very specific and regimented numbers uh, on paper, like what might be on your training schedule. Not that there isn't a time and place for track workouts running the track. The Kenya runners will often run on their dirt tracks as well, but uh, but I think I think it's nice to, to for athletes, for runners to, to go out sometimes and feel okay and not feel guilty about um, not adhering to specific pieces and times um, when they're doing their, when they're doing intense workouts, I think it's much less, much less stressful. So in terms of the science for fartlek training, I just pulled one uh, and put it here. Kind of a given, but 12 weeks of fartlek training significantly improved maximum oxygen consumption or VO2 max and uh, resting pulse rate. And there's a bunch more studies you can find. Uh, I'll link them below. Essentially, that fartlek training can, of course, give you um, physiological benefits that translate to to running. By the way, fartlek is supposed in Swedish is supposed to mean speed play. And some people out there will give you a little bit of a heartache if you say that you can have a structured fartlek. They'll be like, oh, well, specifically, fartlek means it's, it's not structured. You, you're running on the street and you every block you change the amount you're sprinting and it's you do it completely spontaneously. I'm going to run to this flagpole and then I'm, oh, and I'm going to walk or whatever. Okay. But for the purposes of conversation, uh, we'll call a fartlek. Uh, anything where you're just going based on time and effort. So here's some kind of sample workouts and sample ideas. I'll put them up here. Um, there is a place and time for a fartlek style workout at pretty much any time in, in your training cycle. And you can adjust rest, rests and hard intervals up and down. And you can make it a, a milers workout. You can make it a marathoners workout. So our little training talk, your little gold nugget for today is if you don't feel like having that mental energy and kind of accountability and actual stress to hold yourself to these specific uh, times and specific paces, it's okay. Don't feel guilty. You don't always have to go to the track and kind of rip out intervals and stuff. You can just go out on the roads or on the trails and throw a fart lick in there and you can get some fantastic aer aerobic benefits. Right, everybody, thank you for watching this week's Renews. I hope everyone is doing well wherever you are and I hope you are not in a horrible heat wave without air conditioning right now because it totally sucks. I think in about four days, three days, I'll be able to sleep without sweating profusely. I'm very excited. All right, everybody have a lovely week. Please stay safe, wear your masks if there are required stay socially distant please and i'll see you guys next week bye